So welcome to The Crux, uh, where we address the most important issues in the channel partnership ecosystem and share advice and insights from uh, the partnership industry's top experts, all of whom who have grown or uh, started some form of partnership strategy to drive additional revenue or awareness uh, for their organization or charity. Uh, my name is Adrian Hill. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Crux. And today, very fortunate enough to be joined by someone who has been a part of some of the world's fastest growing partnership programs at organizations like HubSpot, GoOne, and Clavio. Uh, so our guest today is Jeremy Singh, uh, the Senior Partner Manager at Clavio. Uh, it's great to have you on the show, Jeremy. Welcome. Thank you very much. I am getting paid for this, right? Aren't I, yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> under the table. <laughs> no, just kidding, mate. I I am so happy to be here today. Like, absolutely love a chat with you um, and sharing some stuff with um with some of your folks there. So appreciate. Yeah, no. uh, we've obviously known each other for a long time, so it's good to sit down and uh, and and extract all that valuable information out of your uh, very knowledgeable brain. So I appreciate your time. No worries at all. So why don't we start to start at the top, Jeremy? And you know, sort of. Walk me through your journey uh, so far, and, and what's led to your current role at uh, Clavio. Yeah, it's an it's I guess it's a can be a bit of a weird weird pathway for somebody to have in their career. No one um, dreams as a five year old of being a partnership manager at a at a tech company. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do out of school, so I just kind of followed where the money was. Um, uh, and I worked, um, started off working customer success, I uh, moved on to work in a sales, um, in, in, in a sales part of an organization, um, mainly because the hours were better. And I learned about this thing called commission, which was really, really handy for the hip pocket. Um, so I did that for quite a while and because I was studying at the same time and I was actually studying marketing, um, I thought that, uh, the mature thing to do would be to get a marketing job. Um, I lasted probably about 10 months in a marketing role for, um, this was early, this was telco days. So, um, I was working for Sony Ericsson at the time, right. um, and decided after those 10 months, that I didn't really like the role. So I moved back into sales. Um, I then moved uh, moved around to a few different types of sales roles. I was an okay salesperson. Um, like a lot of other um, sales folks, I had months where I did really well. I had, you know, months I did badly. Um, uh, but then I got a offer for a role one day and I interviewed for a sales role. And um, they put this other option in front of me, which was, do you want to get into partnerships? And that was for a company called HubSpot. Um, which I'll be honest with you, at the time I heard of the name, I'd read the marketing blogs, but I didn't really understand or realize what they what they did. Um, it wasn't until I got into the interview process, so I, I knew that. Um, so um, I interviewed there actually as a salesperson. Um, they saw something in me in terms of my business acumen, saw the broad range of um, experience that I had across multiple industries, understood their business background, um, and they saw, hey, this person could be actually be really suited towards a partnership team. So I worked in that team, part of the sort of first 10 people that started at HubSpot in Australia, back when the company had just IPO'd um, and was probably sitting at about 700 staff globally. Um, and then moved and then basically grew within that business, got a lot of my base knowledge of partner programs um, in that business and, and how to work within that role. Um, moved on from there to um, a little Australian startup called Go One, um, which was where I met you. Um, and that was a different beast altogether because that was more like starting that partnership program um, and trying to go out there and hunt for new partners and and working um, and working out how to how to approach that. Also, because it was a startup, there was less of a playbook to to sort of follow. Um, so went there and I did that. We're kind of both sides of the coin in terms of people that would on sell our products and attach their services to it to um, to folks that would integrate our product um, into into their current offering. Um, um, uh, I, after that, I worked a couple of other roles and during the pandemic, and then I moved on and I just after, as, just as we were getting out of lockdown, I, I joined Clavia, which is, which is where I am now, which is a good middle ground between those two yeah. really sort of well-established and, and very sort of startup and emerging type partner type role. 
Fantastic. Excellent. Yeah, it's been a it's been a wild journey, those early days at HubSpot, I'm sure. Uh, would, yeah. have, would have been quite exciting. And then into the, uh, as, as you said, those go one days were very uh, rough and wild and it was a uh, very startup vibes, but it was a bit of fun. I, I can- yeah, it was, it was a good team. We had, um, you know, groups of really, really smart people that would realize, okay, something needs to be done. Let's work out the quickest way to do it and the quickest way to accelerate it. Um, and as we were going, sort of writing the playbook of how, we would engage with partners and and different ways that we could both you know provide value to their businesses and in turn provide value to our business which is my sort of my core belief of what a partnership should be yeah fantastic excellent and then you you mentioned Clavio um can you tell us mm-hmm. more about about Clavio and and what they do yeah sure so Clavio is a unified customer data platform um basically it pulls in data um um from a v- various array of different um activities um that someone will engage with the brand with so at the core of it it's really it really comes down to that now what that actually is perceived at when you push it out into market is a direct to consumer communication tool right. um and when i say direct to consumer communication tool that's our core strength so we work with businesses that are somehow trying to communicate directly to their end user um and that communication comes in the way of emails comes in the way of text messages comes in the way of push messages as well to you know through to brand apps um uh so we just we like i've heard the phrase before we like data vampires we'll take out any information that we can we use that information to sort of segment and to analyze and to to work out the not only the right way someone likes to be communicated with, but the right time and the right message um, that someone likes to be communicated with, which um, then in turn drives a lot of value back to that um, to that company or that brand that is um, that is utilizing that that information and knowledge. Fantastic, yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of, that we could be very valuable for all those organisations to better track of that and and better understand what their customers are looking for. Fantastic, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then sort of you know. What sort of partners do you focus on or can you tell me a bit more about your role currently? Yeah, sure. So um, Clavia has got really, or if, you, if you're counting all of them, we've really got like three different types of partners. One side, we've got platform partners, um, which are like your um, big e-commerce platforms, Shopify, Magento, big commerce, you know, those sorts of things. So there's a, there's the core foundations of what a website is built on. We've also got technology partners, which are things like um, Zendesk, um, for example, which is what, something like one of those websites you use or um, another help desk tool, which is like gorgeous. Um, we've got um, CDP technology providers as well um, that, that also work in that space and, and, and search and merch type. So they're, they're technology and ancillary sort of technology products that um, that work alongside um, those websites, basically things that collect data. Um, as I mentioned, Clavio is a, a very um, data hungry sort of platform and the more data you feed it, the more value you're going to extract from it. So yeah. we, we, we've got an open API and we try to link up with as many of those as possible. Um, so we've got a partner manager, a different type of partner manager that looks after those. My role at Clavio is I look after our agency book. So Clavio is a really valuable tool. You can do a lot with it. There's a lot of value that a business can get out of a unified customer data platform. Um, however, at the end of the day, it's still a tool. If you buy it and just leave it on the shelf or you don't have time to work on it, um, uh, it's not going to give you the value that you've invested in it. Um, so that's why I work with, so sometimes businesses can't um, do that themselves. And in which case they go to our partner, agency partner community, which is the ones that, which are the ones that I work with on a day-to-day basis. So um, it's it's a fascinating role. I, uh, I basically work with various different types of businesses, right from folks that are very top of funnel focused, you know, SEO, paid media, got um, paid media folks, um, uh, you know, even social media type agencies, um, web developers and web designers who, who might be implementing one of those big um, uh, platforms um, and then realizing, hey, these folks are still using a archaic emailing and, and text messaging system. 
um, we we know they're going to get more value if they use you guys, and they'll 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 contact me and push that over um, right through to your. And this is where I spend a lot of time as well is um, our marketing agency. So people that do focus on that communication, that communication strategy, um, and also really build out their core service offering around what you can, how you communicate, um, and and when you communicate with your customers. Um, and they're the ones that build. So, uh, so a lot of those other folks, they would be referring businesses to us. Um, I spend a lot of time talking to folks as well that, so I spend a lot of time talking to them, but I also spend a lot of time working with folks that are referring business to us, but also taking on that work and being that first point of call, that expert in Clavio, um, that, um, that businesses rely on as well. Oh, fantastic. It's a very, it sounds like a very diverse role and it's trying to learn many different facets of the agency partnership and, and what they're looking for. I'm sure it'll uh, keep you on your toes and nice and busy. It is extremely diverse. Um, because with all of those different types of all those different types of partners come various different business models. They all make money in different ways. Yeah. Um, and to really know what value you provide in that partnership, you've got to have a really good understanding of how they're making money from your 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 tool, your product, your your offering. Um, and 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 that's the thing that takes a little while sometimes for people to wrap their heads around, especially if you've got a book of partners that um, is already established. Um, because I I look I, I I went there and I remember my first trade show I went to, which was um, I think it was like a week and a half or two weeks after I started, and I was trying to work out which which of my partners were playing nice, if you know what I mean, that didn't have overlap in services. Yep. Um, it turns out that the ecosystem that we have, at least the e-commerce ecosystem that we have in Australia, everyone kind of plays nice, even if they have, even if they are super competitive. But I was also tried to work out because I've got partners that refer business on to other, like other partners. There might be um, a web dev shop that needs, that also refers things to a marketing agency. So trying to work out that and map that all out, um, uh, what took a little while for me to 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 work out and where they where they all fit in, and then layer that over the top with, I've got um, you know colleagues within the industry, not colleagues that work for Clavio as such, but like other partner managers that I will lean on yep. to get like little bits of information um, about what's happening in the market, um, trying to understand where their technology sits and and what their technology does. Um, it takes a little while, especially if you're fresh into that industry. Yeah, very good. Yeah, no, it's, and you, you touched on, you know, it, the industry, especially in Australia is, is going through a, a fairly significant growth phase. Um, you, mm -hmm. you touched on, you know, leaning on some of those contacts is more and more, uh, which is makes it beneficial for for someone like yourself to be able to lean on them and, and get that relevant information, which is always. Yeah, handy. absolutely. Absolutely. No, you just, you just got to be good to people. Yeah. And then on the back of it, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> there, is, there is an influx of, of new, you know, channel partner managers coming into the space. So, you know, from a, you know, if you could go back in time, um, you know, if you had your time over again, is there anything that you would do differently next time? I don't know if it would be something that I would do differently. It was something, it would be probably something I would realize quicker. Um, like on the surface of it, you look at a partner manager and you think, okay, so this is a wine and diner. Um, they are very good at running up expense bills, um, uh, taking people, taking folks out to dinner and all that sort of stuff. And I won't lie to you, that is a, definitely a part of the role. Um, uh, we, we do do a lot of that sort of type of work um, because that's how you forge good relationships. That's how people trust you. Um, but there is a very big element of at the core of it still, that's kind of like, yeah, service area, that's kind of, that, that happens. But at the core of it, you still need to understand how a business works and you still need to know how everybody makes their money. Um, so have a very intimate understanding um, and a very transparent understanding of how someone's going to make money out of using your tool, your product or your service um, is ultimately. And then once everybody knows how everybody's making money, everyone knows everyone's motive yep. um, uh, and, and them and, and your partner's motive might not be to keep growing and growing and growing. You, they, they might keep growing it until they get to a point where they just park their business and go, look, I've got my 15 clients happy with that. Um, don't bug me for any more leads after that point because I've got my 15 clients yeah. and that's cool. That's that, that, that person's living their best life and, 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 and they're doing well with their business or that, that, that partner might be, I, after I get my first 15 clients, I want to open up a second location. 
And after I open up that second location, I get the third location, fourth location, and we're just going to take over the world. That's a, you have to treat those two folks very, very different, even though they're on the surface of it, they have the same type of business. But yeah. so, um, so understand that as well. So there's, there's, there's really two parts of it. There's the motive of there's the understanding their business in terms of how they're making their money, um, what type of services or products they are attaching to either your service or your product. But um, also just understanding that that CEOs or that founder or that owner's motive around yeah. why they started that business and where they want to take it mm -hmm. as soon as you can get those two and that might take a bunch of different meetings that might take you might be able to nail that within the first month of dealing with them you might nail it after three years of working with them um, but once you know that that's when that partnership can um, can really can really thrive um, and and um, that's something I sort of um, it took a little while to understand because I was just pushing product originally um i didn't really take the time to sort of understand their business and, and that's a very very core cool part of it um, mm, just ask yeah. some question why why are we talking like even if you um if you go in and, and um and you're pitching the partnership it's not necessarily pitching the partnership it's kind of like i want to stand, i want to understand if it makes sense for us to work together sure. um, because you're going to get something out of it i'm going to get something out of it um, let's just see if if that is aligned. If that's aligned, we'll work together. If it's not, I'll go work with somebody else. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really really good, really good. That's a really good tip for for young players coming in. I suppose yeah. transparency and, and setting that foundation early is going to really set up the uh, the relationship to be as successful as possible. So that's a really uh, yeah, really really good tip. Um, and then for, more from a, a tech side, do you guys mm -hmm. currently have a tech stack that you use? In your in your sort of your partnership program and, and if so what are you guys currently using yeah so at from a from a basic level i guess you've got a crm we use salesforce customized um and and um there's a there's a there's a fair bit in there that's customized especially for the partner program um we've got a clavio um we use a couple of other tools so our partners use a portal called allbound um allbound is what our is basically um, what you what we use for get, getting communication out to partners. Um, we've also got learnings and academy type tools in there as well, where they can do certifications. Um, um, importantly, from my targets and and from my point of view as well, we've also got things like leads that get registered in there. So yeah. when a partner has a lead, that's where they also register it with us. And then what happens with that is then that kind of hits our CRM, Salesforce. And then when we progress the lead on our side, then the partner gets visibility on it. So it's very transparent in terms of how it works. Um, uh, um, that That's actually a really sort of core tool to to what we use. We use something else called Crossbeam as well, which allows us to kind of share our um, books of business um, in in a way. Um, so we can just know if somebody's working on something, we're trying to prospect. Yep. Um, so we can know to lean on them. Um, and am I forgetting anything? Um, directories. Yeah, we use a, we've got a on-site partner directory called um, uh, partnerpage.io. Um, as well so that's where our partners register their details and people will go I'm looking for an email agency based in Australia that has that can do something with this budget and then they'll bring out a list partners has got a profile page that um, you know looks like a, almost like a social media page but it's got examples of their work and stuff like that they upload on there so it's a bit of a okay. advertisement from there um in terms of partner specific tools, I think that's the main ones. Um, we've got like internal intelligence tools we use, like internal intranets and stuff that we use, but they aren't necessarily partner specific. Um, and, you know, the other rest of the stuff like Zoom and all that sort of stuff that we use to catch up with people. Yep. Oh, very good. It's it, it's, it's it's quite refreshing to hear that, you know, at least Clavio has, has invested into their partnership program, uh, you know, and, and given the partner managers the tools, uh, to 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 be successful and to thrive in that environment, so um, that is uh, that is quite refreshing uh, to yeah. hear. Um, yeah. And then, what's the what's the biggest challenge uh, that you've that you've found when launching or growing a partnership program? Yeah, there's look, there, there's a couple. It's really it's really um, hard to say. Like you know, there's one definite you know big big challenge there's challenges that i've had at different phases of my life i've got a young family um uh they're getting older as i get older funnily enough um <laughs> it's funny how that works isn't it 
Um, I've got a relatively young family. Um, partnership roles aren't necessarily for anybody, everybody. Like they require you to, it's almost like you're working two jobs um, in, in, in many ways. You are dealing with influxes of communication, information, just getting constantly downloaded from you. Um, we've got this lead, we're working with this client, so on and so forth. And the pace in which it moves in is very, very, very quick. But at the same time, you if someone's hosting an event, or somebody's, oh, you've got to make an appearance. It's There's also the social aspect of this role as well. Um, so you've got to go out, you've got to take people out to dinner, you've got to um, talk publicly, you've got to um, do all that sort of piece. And you might be doing that till late at the night, but then you've got to pull out 15, got to get ready, you know, a bunch of different reports because you need to track as well analytically how your how, how you know where how, what your pipeline looks like where the next leads are coming from all that sort of stuff and your general performance of your partners so um it's it's the it's the it's it's that sort of duality of that role um yeah. it's probably the it's probably the the tough bit that people struggle with sometimes and it's something that you know still to this day like if i've got a heavy event schedule coming up um i look at it and i go man i know that's three like three events over a week and a half or two weeks but i know what the follow-up to those three events look like and i know that when i'm there and i'm out of office i can't have these regular meetings so those are going to get pushed back and then it just get, creates a cascading effect that's going to um that's going to hurt in the long run um but you know you have to find a way to, to time manage that and 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 roll ahead with it mm, we're all right. with all are being charming yeah, yeah, which you have in spades, Jeremy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it kind of sounds like you're running a bit of an orchestra. You're having to control different elements of the business. You've got your external elements. You've got your internal stakeholder management as well. You're reporting. Um, so yep. yeah, you're right. It's not it's not for the faint hearted. And it's but it's it, once you develop the skill set, it's a it's a yep. really fruitful and exciting uh, role and opportunity. Um, oh, there's there's things I've done in partner programs that I would have never got to experience otherwise. Um, uh, you know, the fun parts of the role, you know, box seats at a sporting event, um, you know, some incredible dining experience for a restaurant that, you know, if I was paying for that, I wouldn't be able to. So there's really, really cool perks. I've, um, you know, uh, yeah, this is, so there's some really, really cool sides of it, but um, you have to sort of, um, yeah, take, take that as well as realize that there's a lot of follow-up and a lot of work that comes out with it. Um, um, and I will also add as well, it's not the same for every industry. Like I've been in certain partner programs within industries where they aren't as fast paced um, and their things don't move as quickly. So you don't have as much information that's constantly downloaded into you. But I can tell you with the direct to consumer e-commerce space, um, the speed in which information comes to you the quickness in which you have to move yeah. um, is um, probably the the fastest paced partner sort of environment that I've been in. Yeah, keeps, nice. Keeps you going though. Yeah, absolutely, excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, that's fantastic. I'll um, is, is probably last question. Is there anything else that you know that I haven't asked, or any relevant questions that you think would be worthwhile for people to know? Probably the most underrated skill set for a partner manager, in my opinion, is the ability to talk publicly yep. um like you know people people say it all the time like public speaking is something that um will help you in life um i was lucky enough to go to a drama focused high school so i did quite a lot of public speaking as a result of that um uh so when it came to work and 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 when i started sort of becoming a professional um uh it's something that that i that i, I naturally you know, um, talk to, um, good partner managers because not can always demonstrate and, and talk publicly. Um, yep. and the reason why, especially if you're working for tech companies, especially if you're working for high profile, um, uh, SaaS tech companies, whatever it may be, um, you will get asked to do podcasts, be on panels, host panels, do 15 minute talks, um, host lunch and learns, all that for crowd. I've spoken in front of anywhere between, you know, just a regular meeting where you're speaking in front of like a handful of people right through to, you know, rooms that are filled with up to 500 people in it. Um, uh, yeah, there's one role, I, one particular role I worked in where I was a week and a half into a role and I was on a flight and it, like a nine hour flight. And then I had to talk in front of 
200 people about a topic that I didn't know about, but kind of surface level knew about, mm -hmm. and I had to give a 15, 20 minute speech on it. Um, so the, that's a skill set that, and, and you do that, if you can do that, and if you can be very, very good at that, that's something that is just going to help you in the long term. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, re really, really important elements. I think you also have to have great dress sense uh, as a term. <laughs> So, um, there's that that we didn't touch on as well. So uh, very good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, yeah, I think we'll, 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 we'll wrap it up there. Um, but it was, it was so wonderful to hear, uh, the, the great insights and, uh, that, that you've been able to share today. I'm sure the listeners will, will get a lot of little hidden gems in there that they can, uh, that can use in their own channel partnership program. And yeah. So I just want to say thanks. Uh, thanks for the chat and, um, yeah. And thanks for coming on the show and we'll definitely catch up again soon. Thanks, Adrian. Anytime, anytime. I'll always uh, be ready for a chat with you, mate. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to follow Crux PRM on LinkedIn or cruxhq.com to register as a guest.